come back to us, young one. You have learned well, Malfurion. Better than even I could have expected. The young Night Elf's mentor had insisted that they do this at the height of day, which, as the name would suggest, was a Night Elf's weakest point of time. Had they done this at night, it would have been a lot easier. But that was the entire point. What Malfurion's mentor taught him was not the sorcery of his people, but almost the exact opposite. In many ways, Malfurion had already become the opposite of his people. A bit of an outcast, because he asked questions, sometimes suggested that traditions were stupid, that maybe it was better to try new and different things instead of just doing the same old shit over and over again. He'd once even had the audacity to suggest that their beloved Queen Ashara maybe didn't always have the people's best interests in mind. So all in all, he didn't have a lot of friends. And by not a lot of friends, I mean he had three friends. And one of them was his twin. What did you see, brother? I saw the hearts of the trees, Illidan. Their souls. They're not just theirs, either. I think... I think I saw into the souls of the entire forest. How wonderful, the second of the three friends gasped, causing Malfurion to fight desperately to keep his cheeks from darkening from embarrassment. For reasons he did not yet understand, he felt increasingly more uncomfortable around Taranda of late, whilst at the same time not really wanting to spend any time away from her, because she was very nice to look at. Especially her boobies. <laughs> Is that all? It's a good start, Illidan, rumbled the tutor, Scenarius. Now, Scenarius was a demigod. That's pretty much all the trio of elves knew about him, though. He kept his origins to himself. You've all done well. Go now. Be among your own for a time. It will do you some good. So, the three night elves got up, but Malfurion then hesitated, looked to his companions and said, Go on ahead. I'll meet you at the trail's end. I need to talk with Scenarius. We can wait. There's no need. I won't be long. Then by all means. Illidan then took Taranda by the arm. Come, Taranda. Let's leave him be. Taranda gave Malfurion one last lingering glance, which again made him feel bloody weird. And then the two buggered off. My Shando, forgive me for asking. No need to be so formal, young one. You pay me even more homage than those who claim to preach in my name. Your brother does not bend to me. And for all her respect of my power... Taranda Whisperwind gives herself only to a loon. None of them truly follow the path I now show you. You are the first with the possible aptitude, the possible will, to truly understand how to wield the forces inherent in all nature. And when I say you, young elf, I speak entirely in the singular. But... But Taranda... And Illidan... As I said, Taranda has promised herself to a loon. I will not poach in the moon goddess's realm. And Illidan, I can only say that there's much promise to him, but I believe that promise lies elsewhere. I... I don't know what to say. Malfurion really didn't know what to say. The idea of not sharing the same path with his twin brother really didn't sit right with him. No. Illidan will learn. He's just more headstrong. There's a lot of pressure on him. His eyes are the sign of some future mark upon the world, but he will not make it following my teachings. Scenarius then gave Malfurion a gentle smile. But that won't stop you from trying to teach him yourself, will it? Who knows? Perhaps you can succeed where I failed. Again, Malfurion blushed. Of course his honoured teacher would figure that out. That was exactly what the young night elf intended to do. Now, you wanted to ask me something. Yes. I've been troubled. By a dream. Only a dream. It comes to me every time I sleep. Since I've been learning from you, it's grown stronger, more demanding. Malfurion expected the Forest Lord to simply laugh at him, but instead, Scenarius studied him closely, and after a few moments of intense staring, the demigod leaned back and nodded. Yes, you are ready, I think. Ready for what? A couple of red birds then floated down, and Scenarius whispered something to them and let them fly off. Illidan and Taranda will be informed that you're staying behind for a time. They've been told to leave without you. Why? Tell me of your dream. And so, Arthurian went ahead and did that. The dream started, as always, with the Well of Eternity. At first, the waters remained calm, but 
A maelstrom then formed, with creatures bursting out from it. Creatures he did not recognise. And after that, Malfurion would find himself standing in the midst of Kalimdor. But a Kalimdor stripped of all life. Some great evil had laid waste to the entire land. And in that moment, Malfurion would turn and bear witness to vast fire, burning everything it touched. An inferno that was seemingly alive. Not only did it know the horrors it wrought, it revelled in them and hungered for more. And that was it. Malfurion then looked up at his mentor, who now had a very serious look on his face. And this nightmare, it repeats itself with every slumber. Every one, without fail. I fear this is an omen, then. I sensed upon our first meeting that you may have the gift of prescience, but it's stronger than even I ever expected. So what does it mean? We shall try to discover that. As I said, I believe that you're ready. Ready for what? Ready to walk the Emerald Dream. The Emerald Dream? Malfurion thought. What the bloody hell was that? He'd never even heard of it. It's the world beyond the waking world. The world of the spirit. Of the sleepers. The world as it might have been if we sentient creatures had not come about to ruin it. It is called the Emerald Dream, for that is the colour of its mistress, Isira, the Great Aspect. She and her flight guard it well, and allow only a few to enter it. No night elf has ever walked it. You would be the first of your kind to truly take the path, if you so desire. Well, this was the most unnerving and yet exciting thing Malfurion had ever heard. On the one hand, it would be the next step in his studies of this druidism thing, and a way to make sense of this nightmare he'd been having. But it also sounded bloody mental. What... What might happen? What might go wrong? Even the experience can lose their way back if they become distracted. Even I. You must remain focused at all times, Malfurion. Know your goal. Otherwise you may sleep forever. Malfurion considered that for a moment. He suspected that there were more things that could go wrong that Scenarius was not saying. But... How do I start? You are certain? Yes. Very. Then simply sit, as you have for your other lessons. I will guide you in this first time, but then it's up to you. Lock your gaze in mine, Night Elf. And so, Malfurion stared into the demigod's golden orbs, feeling himself being drawn into a world of endless possibilities, feeling an overwhelming sense of lightness fill him. Do you feel the songs of the stones, the dance of the wind, the laughter? of the rushing water. No, Malfurion felt no such thing. But then a soft sound arose. The shifting of earth. Some sharp toots of wind. Flappy fish noises. You are not yet in the Emerald Dream. First you must remove your earthly shell. Start with your heart and mind, for they are the links that most bind you to the mortal plane. See? This is how it is done. Not quite sure how I'm supposed to visualise that, so we'll just go with Scenarius appearing stark bollock naked. Give way to your subconscious. Let it guide you. It knows of the realm of dream, and is always happy to return here. Malfurion continued to do as he was told, so now he was also stark bollock naked. And a bunch of trippy shit happened for a bit, but I'd quite like to just get a move on with the story. So eventually, Malfurion found himself floating above the shores of the Well of Eternity. First, he surveyed the well itself, then the capital of the Night Elves, Zinashari, which translates to the glory of Ashara. So beloved the Queen had been when she made her ascension to the throne, that the Night Elves had insisted on renaming the capital in her honour. Speaking of the Queen, Malfurion then noted her glorious palace and frowned. Contrary to what others believed, he did actually admire her. She'd done a good job. He just kind of felt like she'd lost focus. The real problem, Malfurion suspected, was with the Highborn, the elves that administered the realm in her name. However, as Malfurion floated closer to the palace and attempted to enter it, he discovered an impenetrable barrier, some kind of protective spell that was so powerful it wouldn't even allow him in this dream realm to pass through it, which only made him more curious. So, he reached out and immediately screamed as a surge of excruciating pain shot through him. Everything around him immediately disappeared leaving only an emerald void in its wake, and this void felt like absolute chaos, a storm of pure magic. Malfurion, you, you must return. return. Malfurion recognised Scenarius' voice and clung to it, latched onto it 
like a drowning person would a piece of driftwood, and luckily for him, that actually worked. The pain started to dwindle as Cenarius' touch grew stronger, and then, oh, what happened, young one? You went even beyond my sight. Malfurion then tried to explain everything he'd witnessed, struggling to put it all into words. This does not bode well. Are you certain it was the palace? I... I can't help feeling that the Queen must be part of it. The Shara is strong-willed. Not even Xavius can control her. Think about what you're saying, young Malfurion. You are suggesting that Queen Ashara, the ruler of the Night Elves whose name is heard in song each day, is involved in something that could be a threat not only to your kind, but the entire world. Do you understand what that means? I understand one thing. I must find out the truth, wherever that truth leads, even if it costs me my very life. Meanwhile, a shadowy figure stared into a small golden sphere, and within it, an almost identical shadowy figure stared back. The well is still in the midst of terrible throes. The night elves play with powers they do not appreciate. Has there been an opinion form on your end? Nothing so far. What can they possibly do save destroy themselves? It would not be the first time one of the ephemeral races did so, and surely not the last. So it seems to us, and to the others. All of the others. Even those of the Earth Order's flight. They keep their own counsel, as usual. They are little more than Altharian's reflection. Unimportant, then. We shall continue to monitor the Night Elf's folly. But it is doubtful it will amount to much more than the extinction of their kind. Should it prove to be more, I'm sure we will be ordered to act by our Lord, Malikos. We too shall act. If commanded by Her Majesty, the glorious Alexstrasza. This conversation is over then. And with that, the conversation was over then, leaving just the first shadowy figure shaking its head at the ignorance of the lesser races. Foolish, foolish elves. 